What's up, my adventure-loving movie nerds? It is time for us to jump into Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Is it actually a good movie, or should they have left the franchise alone? That's what we're going to talk about on Cinema Sermons. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome back to Cinema Sermons. My name is Kevin and today we are going to be reviewing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. This is the fifth film in the Indiana Jones franchise and the final one as Harrison Ford is now 80 years old. There have already been a lot of reviews out on it. I'm going to go ahead and give a very vague review in case you have not seen the film. I don't want there to be any spoilers. So let's jump right into it. But before we do, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. It helps out the channel tremendously. And tell me down below, what did you think of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? So jumping right into my positives. So the opening of the movie is actually really cool. The opening takes place in 1945, and it's a young Indiana Jones looking for an artifact. And it's just a classic Indiana Jones adventure. The way it's cut, you can tell it is made for a modern audience. It doesn't have that same feel as with the original trilogy and how those movies were made, but it is a lot of fun. The digital de-aging on Harrison Ford doesn't look bad for most of the time. There's a few scenes where you see it and you're like, yeah, that doesn't look so good. But for the most part, it feels good and it looks good and it feels like a classic indie adventure. They didn't really nail the voice, so you see a young Harrison Ford and you get old man Harrison Ford's voice. So that doesn't really work so good, but if you know what you're getting into, it is a lot of fun and it's it's got everything that you want from an Indiana Jones film. So that opening scene, the first 20 minutes of the movie is really good. And I kind of wish they just would have done that, like done little 30 minute adventures, like lost adventures from Indiana Jones, maybe get a different actor like Jensen Ackles or someone to play it. You know, cause in a movie you could only have Harrison Ford play Indy, but if it's something like that on Disney Plus, that would have been cool, but they didn't do that. Harrison Ford actually delivers in this performance. He brings a lot of emotion and gravitas to this character. It's probably the most emotional performance we've seen from Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones because he is at a very different place in his life. If that's good or bad, we'll talk about here in a little bit, but Harrison Ford as an actor brings a lot to this character in a way that we haven't seen yet, and he does a really good job. The score by John Williams is fantastic, as always, and it was a lot of fun to see all the little callbacks. I thought they did the callbacks in a really good way, having Sala come in it, the new character that was played by Antonio Banderas, just an old indie friend, I thought was pretty cool. And then there's another callback at the end of the movie, I don't want to spoil that, because the end of the movie was actually really tender and legitimately put a smirk on my face. It was it was nice. A few of the action scenes I actually really enjoyed, like the diving scene and things like that. There, a few of these, these scenes were actually really enjoyable, and the movie wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I thought the movie was gonna be horrible, no redeeming qualities whatsoever. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Mads Mikkelsen as the villain does a good job. He plays an older Nazi, so he was young in 1945, and then this is 1969. So he's older, and it actually works for the time period because the US government actually did recruit Nazi scientists to work in the space race. So timeline-wise, it actually works out. I'm a little burnt out on indie versus Nazis. Like, give us a different villain. It's kind of just going back to the well because you know it's safe but Mads Mikkelsen does a good job in the role he's given. And the MacGuffin really wasn't that bad. Uh, uh, the Dial of Destiny is this thing created by Archimedes and it's it's a time travel device. If you didn't know that, sorry. That, that doesn't really spoil anything. A lot of people hated like, really, we're doing time travel again? And maybe it's just because I've known it was coming for so long. I really wasn't that thrown off by it. You know, there's always a supernatural edge to what Indy's looking for and it, it didn't bug me that much. I didn't think it was as good as it could have been. You know, there, there's so many other things that we could have delved into, like the tree of life in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis, right? Because you have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there's another tree, the tree of life. Have an old man, Indy, looking for that because he misses adventure, he misses being young and handsome. Like, have that, you could have done that, but they missed out on that and they decided to go for time travel instead. Um, but it wasn't that bad. James Mangold actually does a really good job as a director. He's a very competent director. You know, Ford v Ferrari was a really good movie. Logan is a good movie. James Mangold is a good director. And to step into the shoes of Steven Spielberg and direct a movie uh, uh, that only Steven Spielberg has directed in the rest of this franchise, he does a really good job with what he's given. And the movie did have some good feelings. It's always awesome to see Indiana Jones and, and Harrison Ford back in the hat, back in the whip, back in the jacket. Uh, and like I said, it did have some good moments. Getting into my negatives. First and foremost, 
we go to an Indiana Jones movie to see Indy, you know, confident and competent and fun and funny and adventurer and take, you know, fighting these great fights. It was hard to watch a sad, old, depressed Indy. And they give a reason why he's sad and depressed. It's still not why you go to see an Indiana Jones movie. As many problems as Kingdom of the Crystal Skull had, Indy was still Indy. He's still confident. He's still capable in a fight. He's still outsmarting the villains. In this one, he's kind of just a frail old man who needs help. And I understand that people get older, but that's not why you go to see an Indiana Jones movie. And I just, I, I didn't know why that was necessary. Um, again, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but I don't know why Lucasfilm has to keep deconstructing these characters like Han Solo, like Indiana Jones, and kind of just bring them down a bit. Um, so it, it's, you're there to see Indiana Jones and all the things that make Indiana Jones be Indy. Like I said, you know, in, in the first one, men wanted to be him and women wanted to be with him. You know, and, and of course that's not gonna happen for an 80 year old man, but still have that charm and charisma and, and that spark, right? Like he could have been an older man who's looking back at his life and him and Marion are happily married like at the end of Crystal Skull. And he's satisfied with the adventures that, he, that he's had, but he's ha struggling with retirement and suburban life and there's that part of him that still yearns for adventure and you know mutt takes over in, in his shoes or mutt and short round are working together and then one of them gets lost and they have to go find indy and that brings him back into the adventure you could have done it so much better like there's a good movie buried in here it just wasn't executed well in my opinion mainly because you don't this isn't why you go to an indie film Four. So uh, an old, sad, depressed Indiana Jones was hard to see on screen. You know, story-wise, I would say this is a better movie than Crystal Skull in terms of like the MacGuffin that they're looking for and you know, just the, the feel and tone because Aliens is so foreign to Indiana Jones. But at least Crystal Skull gave you real Indy. This movie is a shadow of what Indy used to be. Uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character, Helena Shaw, is insufferable for the first two thirds of the movie. Now the third act comes around and you're just kind of used to her, she's there. And you know, you, you don't want anything bad to happen to her. Like, you know, you don't want the character to die, but if she did, you wouldn't care because she's just not a good person throughout the whole movie. And I felt like it was very totally inconsistent. Do you want her to be a bookworm? Do you want her to be, you know, this streetwise, you know, hustler? Or do you want her to be a femme fatale? Which in my opinion, Phoebe Waller-Bridge does not fit the archetype of a femme fatale. And they tried to do all three and it was just very totally inconsistent and she was just so insufferable as a character. Again, the last thing we want to see in an Indiana Jones movie is some chick showing Indiana Jones how it's done. Not just the chick, we don't want to see anyone showing Indy how it's done. We want Indy to be competent and that doesn't happen because Helena has to be the star of the show and that, you know, for most of the movie, there, there's times where Indy gets, gets to, to show up and show out, but they're few and far between. Uh, the very ending of the movie was tender, the climax of the movie made me want to throw my drink at the screen. I was like, are you serious? That's what you did? Um, it, I, I could believe that that's what they decided to do to Indiana Jones. Stop cutting down our characters. Stop cutting down our heroes. Uh, the little kid, Teddy, he, he was kind of like a replacement for Short Round, but he just didn't have that charm and charisma. I'm sure the actor is fine and, and the, the young man that they got to play the character, I'm sure he's a, a great kid, but the character that was written, I just didn't really enjoy. That's about all I can get into without getting into spoiler territory. And of course, all the CGI. Um, you know, there weren't many practical effects. It's not as much CGI as it was in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I understand you have an 80 year old Harrison Ford, you can't do all practical, but it, it, it just doesn't have that same feel that the original trilogy had. And that's about as many, as much as I can get into in this review without getting into spoiler territory. Jumping into my sermon, Talking about time travel, I'm sure there's things that all of us wish we could go back and change, right? I know there's a lot that I wish I could change. I know people say, well, you wouldn't be who you are today. No, no, no. If I could go change stuff, I would. But that's not how that works. And we have to just trust that God will use those things, right? It says he makes beauty out of ashes, but there has to be something has to burn before there can be ashes. So I know that a lot of times things may seem hard, but we just have to trust and believe that God is going to use these things that we wish we could change and we know we wish we can go back in time and make things different. We just have to trust and believe that God is going to be working through those things and he's gonna be working on our behalf. And I know I'm not preaching at you. I'm saying we have to do this because this is something that I struggle with and I'm open and honest enough to be vulnerable to say, I really struggle with this. But you know, 
there's things we can't change and we just have to trust that God is working through it on our behalf. And if we believe the word to be true, he is. All right. So for my final rating of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, this movie plays it safe and lands right in the middle. It's not horrible. It's certainly not great or even good. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a two and a half out of five stars. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is worth seeing. If you, were, if you do not, not have all that nostalgia for the original trilogy, you might really enjoy this movie. But probably if you, if you are a huge fan of those movies, you're not gonna like what they do with the character. But again, like I said, it does have some redeeming qualities. It does have some good moments. So my recommendation is actually go see it and go see it in the theater. We wanna save the theater industry. We wanna keep movies coming out on the big screen. So please go see this movie in the theater. It's worth it one time watch, in my opinion. But that is all I have for today. Please let me know down in the comments, what did you think of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? We have a ranking coming up of all five Indiana Jones films in the franchise from worst to best. And let me know what you think. What is the best or worst Indiana Jones film? Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. It helps out the channel tremendously. And remember, I love you. Jesus loves you. That's our story. We're sticking to it. See you guys.